Yes! Friday has arrived! As I peek out the board, <laughs> throw her in the red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, a little bit of little tunes at the front of this uh, podcast this yeah, time. Yeah, we're fucking stepping our game up. Well, which actually, and to our credit, we always have a tune at the front of the front of the podcast. It's just the problem is we usually don't have it to where anybody else can hear it except for us. So. And then uh, <laughs> forgot. Oh shit, we have a third mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, well, it'd be even, even. Well, I guess I guess it turned out all right. We'll have to check the sound quality later. But uh, we have our, all of our XLRs are all like ten footers. So <laughs> much like ourselves as men. Yeah. Uh, well, we. We'd have it like we'd have no podcast. We could put all three of them together and like drag it all the <laughs> way over the where the rest of the speakers are at. But hey, nonetheless, uh, it is uh, the our uh, weekly batch of uh, the Meat Metal and MMA podcast. I'm yeah. Kevin, that rascal over there. Our um, the tired, the world weary. Yeah, our uh, resident uh, master of many things, Brandon. Uh, you know, I like that. I'm gonna use that in a fucking RPG. Master, master of a few things. Uh. Yeah, uh, that, that jack of all <laughs> type of thing. Of Whew, that sounds like a lot of pressure. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, when it comes to tabletop, I, I, I thrive on that shit. Get together all the time, talk about our three favorite subjects, but uh, we usually start off by, uh, how's your week? Uh, I fucking hate rodeos. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> Because everyone at my hotel is rodeo. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay, I was thinking, well, shit, man. All right, I guess if you're going to pick a sport, I mean, mine's yeah. kind of like, uh, no, mine's, mine's the NFL, but okay. No, I've always thought rodeo's dumb, <laughs> um, but. You're going to lose that important demographic I know Wyoming. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys in Wyoming. I mean, I think y'all are good people. Your sports are just dumb to me. Um, no, like, a hotel, 45 rooms all, 44 of them are occupied by local rodeo stars, I guess. Okay. Everyone smells of leather and shit. It isn't. Well, that is that is the smell of rodeo. Yeah. However, the, is, I, I had no problems with them at all. All night. Everything went quite well. But for the past two weeks, there's been a man staying in my hotel that... Do you know that broad that walks around town here sometimes, always talking to herself? Fuck, that's fucking half the population. I yeah. Think. But she wears like a beanie all the time. Coke Maybe. bottle glasses. Maybe. I don't know. B cups down to her belly button. Never wears a bra. Good Lord. Well, all right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to narrow in, it down as much as I can. Maybe I run in different crowds. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so, it, but anyway, this this person, uh, he's like 60 years old. Got a beard about like you, only it's fucking Snow White. Uh, conspiracy guy. Okay. Government, fear, the whole thing. Never turned his TV on his room because he felt like the government could be able to watch him. Of through, course, of course. You know. And every night, three times a night, I work the fucking night shift when everyone's supposed to be sleeping. Probably about three times a night, he'll go out there for an hour, smoke probably about six or seven cigarettes, and yell. Oh, oh okay. Because I was looking at the uh, security camera, and I saw that, saw that beard flapping like he was chatting. And he was doing the arm movements like he was fucking talking to someone who was out of camera shot. I go outside to have my own little little cigarette. And this dude is yelling about how the good state of New Mexico and Arizona are being fucked by the government. And no one's doing a goddamn thing about it. And then he said something about Alice Cooper. Oh, well, you should have called the cops. <laughs> well, funny thing is, the cops actually, the day he checked in, the sheriff was there to talk to him. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so he's been there how long? He's been there like a week and a half. God damn, you're—I uh, mean, nothing against, no offense against your employers, but they ain't cheap to stay at that place. No, especially, and he's paying cash because you know off the grid. But he lives somewhere in Arizona, and this man is horribly unbalanced. So be on the lookout. So is he? What, he's married to this chick that walks around. No, no, this dude is a loner. Oh, so you're comparing him to her? Though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, as far as like the same thing, government out to get you. JFK was inside job, yada yada yada. These are people collecting a payment, probably from the government. For oh yeah, crazy. It has yeah. to be. And he, and this dude always wears camo, so he has to be. I mean, I'm, I get that vibe of former military from him. Okay, but he also smells like patchouli and ass. Uh, so well, maybe, he might. Maybe be, he's got some interesting hobbies. He just <laughs> might be a dirty hippie. Yeah. Ah, uh, good lord, man! Yeah, I know it's been a hell of a week, but I've yeah. had a really fun one. I've had a crushing headache for like two and a half days now, straight. I mean, it hadn't subsided once. So, 
I don't know. I got yeah. lit up by mosquitoes. Fuck, it might be West Nile or something. I have no God idea. Yeah, man. You're going to have to get that shit checked. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, naturally with the timing of it all today being Friday, good luck catching a doctor That's anywhere. True. <laughs> you always go to the clinic. Uh, they're very, very uh, receptible to patients after 6 p.m. I have, oh, well, yeah. Meaning your ass is waiting an hour for sure. a nurse to come in and be like, oh, yeah, we don't have time to do this. So how much do you weigh? What's your height? Um, well, you're talking ER. I refuse to pay. Oh, no, no. Shit. I went to the clinic. Oh, okay. And waited an hour, finally got in there. And they didn't weigh me. They didn't measure me. Dude just stuck his head in the door. He was like, so how much do you weigh? What's your height? Oh, wow. Well, that's like, handy. I was like uh, six foot eight and 180 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're already uh, getting your fighting weight up there. <laughs> I'm trying to fight Stefan Struve, 205. He's going to try to make the cut. So that's, uh, that's our fun, fun week right oh, there. Oh, yeah. Fun as fuck. Getting ready to get hammered by rain. So. And supposedly, liquor. and well, the liquor will stave that off. That's the whole thing all week long. I've tried just about everything, trying to get rid of this headache, except for booze. So uh, we'll see if that doesn't work. I think bullet rye and mead will do the trick. Well, speaking of mead, that gets us uh, right into where we need to be, and that is uh, kind of. I've been kind of curious about Runestone. Yeah. Usually, when we do a batch, we'll get just shy of two cases out of it. Uh, Runestone proved to be fairly popular. Uh, moved quite a few of those uh, for our yeah, donors. Indeed. And uh, that being the case, I didn't really ever sit down and just suck back a glass of it. And that's what we're doing right now um, as we speak, as we uh, get into the um, mead portion of the Mead, Metal, and MMA podcast. Runestone, I've got to say, is shockingly a little more bitter than I thought it would be. Yeah. It's, it's good. I'm not, I'm not actually complaining. That's probably just because we you're getting straight up orange peel. It is. It's it's pretty heavy on the orange peel. The vanilla is almost not even there. Yeah. It does strike me as one that really, if you let it sit for a while, it might very well uh, get that point where the honey overtakes it, and then just really, really kind of starts kicking in. But it yeah. does have a very dry, very bitter kind of a uh, flavor to it. Again, I'm always surprised because I was expecting it to be this buttery like, like most of our meads to come across kind of sure. tongue coating kind of for for just a split second then it's gone right kind of buttery kind of a flavor and um no no it's uh it is orange peel <laughs> yeah like again like chilled let the air grab it a little bit yeah not bad I on mean, a hot and, fucking day and on the back of the tongue it's not bad it's um this is probably the first time I've tasted it since we uh, since we bottled. So, oh wow! Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's interesting. Yeah, you're able to go at it with a clear head because I think I've bought like six bottles of shit. Yeah, well, that'd explain why we're <laughs> low. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, though, um, yeah. So, uh, Runestone, we've got a couple more left, and um, uh, we're still sitting really good on um, on a case and a half, probably of Green Man. I yeah. Think. Um, although I do have uh, one friend in Colorado; she was interested in a couple. Right. Um, one, one, oddly enough, one man of the cloth down here. Um, and then uh, then our friend Don, he's always uh, been interested in all everything we've got. Hell, he's still got a 2016 bottle of Green Man sitting at his house. So the 2017 would be. We might have to go to Don's house. <laughs> or no, fuck that. He's going to have to come out here and bring that bottle. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's, he's rat-holed away a lot. I think he's probably, out of all the batches we've done, he's bought almost one of every batch. Yeah. I think he's probably, he probably only drank two. So. I'll tell you what, if he's sitting on a cobalt blue bottle of something delicious, I'm going to break into his house. I know he's probably got guns, but I'm willing to take that chance. <laughs> yeah, the original troublemaker. But anyway, but yeah, yeah, that's... um, But as Brandon actually had mentioned, and that's something I would definitely look into, and that is um, uh, decant your mead. You, if you pick up a bottle of mead from us, what you're going to want to do is drink it in one sitting, I would recommend. Yeah, I mean, that's what I do. <laughs> I'm not saying it's wrong or right, but I'm if just you're saying it can be done. If you want to get a, a consistent flavor, that's kind of what you need to do. Um, yeah, when you, when you decant it, I would definitely splash it into a decanter so that way it gets as much oxygen as possible. The oxygen, what it does, it kind of uh, ages it quickly. Right. Takes kind of some of the bite off of some of the rawness of the uh, of the product. Um, or you can do it the way that my brother Daryl does, and that is take little bits here and there, and then over the course of a week, then, you know, being exposed to oxygen here and there, then it does the same right. thing. Yeah, because I, I think once you open it, you got a week. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's about right. You know, but you also kind of want to be really, really careful and uh, and leave a share in the bottom, a very small amount, because 
that's where all the natural sugars and the and the uh, um, the remnant yeast and everything else. That's why if you pick up one of our bottles and kind of move it around, it'll get these weird ghostly little streams in it. Yeah. That's all sugar and remnant yeast. Yeah, and and keep in mind what we do here is completely natural and above board yeah no we're not going to go out and and buy a filtration system and everything else we're trying to we're trying to make a product that would be not not be unrecognizable amongst the vikings exactly and the vikings did not let their meat age on a shelf for a year yeah well actually they technically did because really well what it was is they they didn't really have well they had an idea but um that you could take like a uh, a ceramic uh jug of honey and uh, get some rainwater in it and uh, let it sit. And then eventually it will start bubbling. Well, because the rainwater, through grabbing natural wild yeast and putting it into the honey, and the honey would have wild yeast in right. it as well. And then, hey, magically, in like in a year, if you put a little bit of wax over the top, then come about a year from now, then, hey, lo and behold, ah. you, you can get liquored up. A little, little set it and forget it style. Yeah, you know, giving a lot of credence to, uh, well, to, uh, I, I would assume, the uh, the pantheon of Asgard. So right. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how it happened, but they're <laughs> treating me well. I don't yeah. know, man. I, I'm, I'm a fan of, uh, I don't know, I've, I've kind of gotten used to that youth alcohol taste. Right. You know, I mean, we've been doing this for going on three years now it's been that long i think so i guess yeah i guess the spring would be three we will be hitting 2018 batches here in a couple months yeah well so uh but anyway but yeah that's what i would recommend um you know and i, I don't like to mention my brother daryl every podcast but it works that way hi daryl i did talk to him last weekend uh during the fights and uh yeah he uh he checked out the 2016 green man um he appreciated the complexity of it you know so i thought that you know, and that, and that really kind of just reinforces what we do because if you do have mead and it does sit around for a long time, it does take on the complexity you would expect to find in a good wine. Absolutely. You know, so, um, and again, and he, and he kind of talked about the whole process of trying to get a little bit of oxygen here and there, um, and it does kind of take the uh, little bit of the uh, bite off of it if it does have a bite. Like this, uh, with this runestone, likely is not... Uh, I don't think we're going to probably finish it this evening. Well, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I had to work a Thursday where I'm normally mod- brown out drunk at least. <laughs> well, if there's any left, then I'm going to be interested to see what it is uh, tomorrow and uh, see what kind of uh, um, effects that that will yield. A lot of you are uh, wondering, well, you guys keep talking about all these batches you finally finished, but you rarely mention. I, I mean, we mention what we'd like to do. Why haven't we started it yet? Oh, yeah, I'll take some whiskey. Indeed. Um, we haven't uh, started anything yet. Here's the problem. The high dollar on honey. It's it's ridiculous. Oh, uh, but the bright side of where we're at now is uh, White Labs is back. Okay. I checked Midwest. Yeah. And uh, they have all their White Labs yeast in stock. Yeah, White Labs does a, a liquid yeast, which we found to be really, really superior in the very first batch we ever did. And then after that, it's hard for us to get our yeah, hands on I, it. I hate to say it. I mean... This last batch one we did was was good. It was right. good, you know. For I mean, shit, honey, yeast, water, you're good to go. Right. The one we did before, when we had a little poor choice in the honey, obviously came out basically just like fucking bubbly water. But that first batch one, that first batch we ever did, right, is one of the best we've ever done. Well, we used the uh, White Labs, you know, yeast that was made for right mead. You know, it was made for sweet mead. Yeah. You know? Um, so we'd had that going for us. We'd use some really good Minnesota clover honey. Yeah. And, um, and I think we used distilled water, which they say don't do because it then robs your batch of some mineral content, which has got to be minimal, minimal at best. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm all right with going back and trying to, uh, recreate, you know, something that was pretty. Could use some of your Mexican uh, mineral water. Well, we, we could have, we could have poured some, uh, Topo Chico in there. <laughs> and went with it. Which thanks for reminding me. I need to take a swap. Which actually, I'm not trying to plug their stuff, but they always say don't drink the water in Mexico. Bullshit. <laughs> Topo Pico is pretty. pretty uh, Topo Chico, rather. You're you're cool if you're drinking the bottled water. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's it's their uh, mineral water out of Monterey. But um, but yeah, nonetheless, though, uh, uh, high dollar of honey is why we haven't started anything yet. The only way we could do it in bulk if we get it from Pennsylvania because the shipping eats our ass alive. Yes, is to get a sixty pound pail. Which then the shipping is about sixty bucks. Yep. You, yeah, I mean, so then we'd have four batches though that we'd be able to pull from, 
you know, over the course of time. That's just, it's a big, big expenditure right, right. now that we're not wanting to climb aboard. We'll However, um, what I think that we'll do is probably, uh, I'm just kind of spitballing out loud, probably uh, go ahead. They do have that Texas honey back in again. Yeah. It's worked out. It's been very consistent for us. Yeah, it has been very kind of us. Um, they actually have that back in stock of where I usually go to shop around for honey at. It's just a matter of me loading up 10 of those bad boys because they come in pound and a half containers. And then people looking at you like some kind of honey hoarder. Well, no, no, I, I, that, that's when you tell them, the disaster's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Repent! Loading up on honey. Uh, <laughs> honey uh, only for diet. For fuck's sake. Uh, so anyway, but yeah, that's, uh, so that's kind of where we're at this week on the, uh, on the mead. Probably a, a longer portion on the mead than we've had in uh, in a little while but uh yeah. But, but yeah that's the whole thing runestone yeah we've got probably four or five bottles of that left the um uh decant it let let the oxygen get to it before you get get too crazy with uh i mean if you're if you're gonna let it sit around on your shelf for a week don't don't decant it and don't go pumping a bunch of uh bunch of air into it but right um but if you're gonna drink it over the course of an evening yes i would recommend that oh got people trying to get a hold of me um bridge captain yeah what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, though, yeah, the, uh, the and then the honey, the, the price of honey, that's what's kind of holding us back. But we're going to get probably a batch going within two weeks. And it'll probably be long ships. And then right behind that, then we'll probably um, pick up and go with a batch of, um, of Troublemaker. Yeah, so, I think it's time. Yeah. All right. Moving on to metal. Uh, you ever heard of a band called Head PE? Head Planet Earth. Is what they're actually called? Uh, no. Uh, they were a big band when I was a, a wee teenage boy. Uh, one of the like when new metal kind of started surging to the forefront. Okay. Uh, they're putting out a new album. I didn't even know they were fucking still active. So, you know, take that for what you will. But apparently, if you buy their new song, which is called "Pay Me." <laughs> like their moxie, okay. Yeah, well, you know, it's fucking to the point. They'll give you weed. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Head P will give you a free joint if you buy their new single. So I'm assuming you'd have to be in uh, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, California, Massachusetts, guess, Maine, Colorado. Uh, or I guess Colorado. send Head P.E. like a copy of your ID and medicinal marijuana card, and then they'll be like, oh, okay, well, now we can mail it to you. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, it, it, granted, it's kind of going that way, but God, it's still, it's still federally illegal. Yeah. I, I mean, this will fly where it's legal. It's still, you know. Yeah, but you're using the U.S. Postal Service? Well, I, 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 it's, I don't think they're going to mail them out. Okay. That was just me, you know, hoping to get some free weed for <laughs> buying a shitty song. All right. Uh, but the, it's actually really cool. They have these little tubes, uh, stick around a one gram little uh, pre- because they have those cone things that you, that are already rolled up, and you can just stuff it in there with your stuff. Uh, the cone actually has the download link for the uh, <laughs> for the song. It's a little QR code, you know? Yeah. That you uh, snap with your phone, and uh, yeah, you uh, you get the weed before you get the free song. Huh? You got to download it from a picture off the fucking thing. That's pretty cool. Step, yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, obviously, if you're in a uh, state that's supportive of uh that particular yeah the funny thing is i think states where recreational marijuana is legal they're probably not listening to head pe yeah probably that's probably true. they're probably listening to good shit um let's see other new releases today cradle of filth but at uh cryptoriana i was about to try to mimic danny filth singing i couldn't do it no it the just... um as every Cradle of Filth album is, I uh, I like the artwork, and that's kind of about where that ends. <laughs> the one, I mean, I, I, I'm, it's great. They have a new album coming out. They only have one fucking song I can actually listen to beginning to end and enjoy it. Right. And it came out in, like, 96. Oh, was that the one that actually was getting, like, some play on MTV at one point? It might have been. It's called From the Cradle to Enslave. It was on an EP that they had put out. Not even a full-length album. Yeah. It's the best song they've ever put out, in my opinion. But it's really Pickens are pretty slim with that band. Uh, the Living put out theirs. If you're not familiar with these guys, they're a pretty good prog band. Um, they, uh, they, they, and you won't be able to find them on iTunes or anything else. They, uh, they, do, they, they do have some stuff up on YouTube. But uh, if you're looking to buy their uh, new one that came out today, it's uh, on uh, Bandcamp. And it is uh, the... I don't think I've ever heard of Living. Yeah, no, they're uh, they're 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 very proggy, but I don't 
again, it's another I one of those you've got you've got to be able to dig on what the uh, lead singer's doing, and I haven't uh, been that's impressed. That's always the deal breaker in Prague, yeah. man. Yeah. The only reason Getty Lee gets away with it is because he's a pioneer. Right. <laughs> no, well, well, Getty yeah. Lee would not work today. Yeah, probably. You're probably right. I mean, even oh God, I don't know. Maybe he would, but I don't know. That guy kind of goes above and beyond. So, yeah, um, church. also new out today uh, with the dead. Uh, Doom Metal Act, I think it's uh, called uh, With the Dead, uh, In Love with the Dead or something like that. They usually nice. work it into nice. every ti- album title. Kind of like Electric Wizard. Yeah, they're okay. Um, they're, they're a little heavier on the Doom side, I would say. I mean, not, not, not heavier. On, they're heavier on their Doom Act, but they, they kind of really get after it. Um, Wolves in the Throne Room have a new one out today, and they still suck. So. Wolves in the Throne Room? Yeah. They're... They they remind me of Downfall of Gaia. Oh, okay. They're like that post post punk metal kind yeah. of, and I want to like them because it's a cool name of an act. But they're really, mus- it sounds they're, like a Super Nintendo fucking RPG. Their music's terrible. Now the great find out of today. Now for those who've been listening for this entire year, brace yourselves. You will know that we uh, talked up uh, Mastodon, Emperor of Sand. Pre-release. Ad nauseum until it came out, and then we got to listen to the whole thing, and then we went, ooh. Didn't talk about it anymore. <laughs> well, it turns out we were looking forward to the wrong album. They put out an EP <laughs> that dropped today, Mastodon's uh, Cold Dark Place. It's only 21 minutes and 50-something seconds. Uh, you would call it 22 just around. Yeah. Four tracks, three of them are great. And actually, and oddly, the title track is the one that's, eh, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, but even that one, when you fucking put it up against what they put out with Emperor of Sand, Crack the Sky, it's not going to be a very popular opinion, but this EP beats the fuck out of both of those. Yeah, no, it does. It does. I mean, um, I'm still a fan of that first track that they initially dropped off of uh, Emperor yeah. of Sand. Um, Sultan's Curse. Yeah. And, and even okay with the second one after that. But after that, that rest of that album is uh, disappointing, I think is the right word for it. But you will not be disappointed, though, in uh, Cold Dark Place by Mastodon. Um, and he, hey, even if you're somebody that said, man, I've listened to a lot of Mastodon, I'm not a fan. Me neither, really. Yeah. Pick this one up. You will you will enjoy it. Yeah. You can, it's free up on uh, YouTube. Pull it up. It's Mastodon, Cold Dark Place. The, uh, the instrumentality is different. I mean, it sounds... It doesn't sound like songs that were on the cutting room floor, which is what it is. Right. Yeah. Apparently, it sounds like its own beast. Apparently, masted on the stuff they cut from a record turns out being the good stuff. <laughs> oh, that's a case with a lot of bands, man. Yeah. Especially Metallica. They, but they were smart enough and did the same thing. Well, yeah, they did the same thing that uh, Mastodon has done. That's right. Uh, load and reload. Uh, no, no. They uh, the, uh, when they put out Death Magnetic, they put out oh. a uh, an EP called Beyond Magnetic, which was four jams that they cut off death magnetic and they were really fucking good i just had a weird feeling that load reload was like a uh, like a cutting room floor oh no fuck that <laughs> no load and reload were fucking uh 28 songs that were recorded all at the same time and just split up into two albums gotcha well anyway those are the new releases today um check it out good stuff going yeah. on uh marilyn manson made a made a comment a couple days ago here now, for the younger folk out there, he uh, used to do some music back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't always on the Wonder Years. <laughs> that was always a weird myth about him. Like, did you know he was in the Wonder Years? Like, no, that ain't that ain't him. No. <laughs> no. It, when did he peak? 97? 98? Uh, let's see. Antichrist Superstar came out in 96, 97. But he put out that Sweet Dreams cover. Oh, Covered Sweet yeah. Dreams Are Made right. of These. Yeah. And then, like, right Which when... Which wasn't awful. I no, it wasn't it. awful. It, it, it's, I mean, it holds up pretty well now. I mean, the song, the cover is probably nearing 30 years old. Uh, 20 years. Over 20 years old. Um, but then right when that song got popular, Antichrist Superstar came out. Okay. And that's when his career fucking just blew up. Well, I think kids liked him because uh, well, because he fucking looked like something the parents... Against the were, grain, you know, yeah. You know. uh, totally against the grain. I mean, at the high school I went to, you could not wear Marilyn Manson shirts. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> you just couldn't. Uh, they signified that about similar as being in a gang. But yeah. anyway... Yeah, uh, Marilyn Manson gang. <laughs> he came out as saying that he's uh, being blamed for the Columbine massacre destroyed his career at the time. 
people blamed him for the Columbine? Yeah. At, uh, right, that, well, he got he got blamed. Rammstein got blamed, and oh. Doom got blamed. Okay, not the musical genre, the, uh, the, video the fucking game. video game people. <laughs> yeah, because let's not blame uh, upbringing or uh, social yeah. situations. No, or fuck the parents; like they're pure as gold. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't know. I think the thing with what wrecked his career is that he grabbed onto something that was only going to be really popular for a very short amount of time, as we see, and wasn't able to parlay that into a something else yeah i mean it was super lucrative at the time but not sustainable no and he we see it, that a lot and in my humble opinion when he put out mechanical albums his third album technically his third album his career sucked after that if you're if your listener base are like basically 15 and 16 year olds you better come up with something else because they're only going to be fans for a short amount of time i agree i agree all right we got anything else in the metal this week big birthday today today is david coverdale's birthday hmm you know, it's funny. I was getting ready to talk shit about him earlier. <laughs> <laughs> we like to talk shit about people around their birthday. Last week it was Dave Mustaine. Yeah. This week's going to be David Coverdale. Well, and actually it's not even his fault. I was actually thinking, you know, because we've been doing like little segments of lists or input of this, that, or that ver- other variety. And, right. Um, and I was going to go with something. I, I don't know. I never really fully kind of developed the uh, question. But something having to do with talking about the careers of those that used to be in a band that broke up and went on and found success. Well, nobody else did. And the perfect point I was going to throw out there was Robert Plant went on, and Robert Plant had great success after yeah. Led Zeppelin. Jimmy Page, not so much. Although... Hey, man, he did that song with Puff Daddy for Godzilla. Well, okay. He broke out Cashmere. And I stand corrected. It. He did a fabulous job with his career. That's after. right. Moving on. Um, <laughs> but he did that, uh, that record with uh, David Coverdale. It was Coverdale Page. Yeah, back at like ninety three, I think is when it came out ninety three or ninety four. Uh, um, I would like to nostalgia tells me it was great, but my problem is I never trust nostalgia. And I went back a couple weeks ago and listened to uh, that record. It's it's very generic for its time. There's really nothing groundbreaking. Yeah, I mean I like Jimmy Page. I do. You know I like right. David Coverdale, and they really kind of sounded all right together. I think it was a problem was they they were kind of both beyond their creative peak. I would say. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they had their arsenal, and that's all they're going to have. Right. I agree. All right. So, anyway, happy birthday, David Coverdale. And Not too much bur- shit talking on his birthday. So. And happy birthday, Joan Jett. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, – I saw her in Denver yeah. a year and a half ago. No, actually, not even a year and a half. Two years ago now. 59. Yeah. She does not look bad. Yeah. She is still a, a stone-cold fox. A lot of ladies would agree with you. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I'm glad I can side myself with the ladies. There you go. Good man. Good Happy man. Happy birthday, all you, uh, all all you, you fuckers old out there. fucking people. <laughs> 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 we got to talk a little shit on people's birthdays. Yeah, you bet. Oh, man. So on to MMA, yeah. Well, here's the problem, and it's not going to ever, we're not going to encounter this God, maybe once a year at most. We always complain about fights when they put them on a Sunday. Yeah. Been a work night for both of us. Uh, we, we we've got a fight night off Friday, and we're yeah, not even as talking about Matter LFA. of fact, it's uh probably still rocking prelims right now. Be my guess. Yeah, because they were running the uh, a schedule like we usually see when those fights are in Vegas. So, right. Um, 8 p.m. Mountain time would be when we and see this, the main uh, card. This card's in Japan, so it's they're it's, probably getting it in the morning, but that's okay. They don't look forward to going to the arena to get shit drunk and watch people kill each other. Um, yeah, by the time the main event starts, about two o'clock, one two o'clock in the afternoon, depending on the time yeah, change. Yeah, we're uh, we're up to the Daiichi Abe versus Hyungyu Lim fights. Yeah, no, uh, I didn't. There, there were only a couple on the uh, on the entire card I recognized, and one of those turned out being a scratch with Charles Rosa. Oh, yeah. Because well, yeah. Um, he was going to be fighting, uh, what's his name, that couldn't even make the, well, he he not only missed weight, God, what's the Japanese cat's name? Hiroti, I don't know, I don't want to try to guess because well, it just sound racist. Yeah, but, yeah, but um, <laughs> dude came in, what, 100 and, 150. 150, which would be great if it was a lightweight fight, but it was not. It was a featherweight fight. Yeah. So he's supposed to come in 145, allowed 146 for overage. He came in four pounds over what you're allowed with that extra pound you're given if it's not a title fight. Yeah, and he looked like he was going to fucking die. Yeah, they had to send out officials and all kinds of stuff to make sure, you know, because he was wobbly and everything else. And they, they just pulled the fight. So no fight for Charles Rosa tonight. And that was one of the few I was actually looking forward to. At, at least he'll still get paid. He'll still get paid to show money. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that, and that's fine. But, I mean, Rosa really needs – because I think he had a loss on his last one out. So this was kind of going to be one that he could have got a little back. The, uh, I think he's got a good career ahead of him. The three f- big fights on this card, in my opinion, are OSP and Okami. Because I'm real curious to see how Okami does at 205. I don't know if he's ever fought at 205. The dude is primarily a middleweight. Right. Um, Gomi probably in the next one. Uh, Gomi and Dung Hyung Kim, who I think Kim is going to – Gonna throttle Gomi. Okay. Well, which Gomi's kind of got that coming to him, I guess. Yeah. Well, Gomi's a little long too. And then uh, that uh, Jessica Andrade and the Gadelia fight. I think that'll be a really good fight. That that one is actually the only thing that really saves the fight card yeah. from otherwise being maybe one of the most lackluster ones of the year. Right. Komain and Okami potentially knocking out OSP in Japan. That'd be maybe. that'd be a good moment. Isn't that a rematch? I don't think so because Okami hasn't fought in the UFC in years, and I don't think yeah. he's ever fought at two hundred five. And OSP has always been very lackluster, man. If that guy could ever figure out Hot how to hot and cold, as man, if he soon, could figure out how to finish. As soon as Reebok came in, man. Well, I thought you were going to say Usada. That's our usual chant. Well, well, yeah, Reebok. Well, that was kind of around the same time. Right. Reebok and Usada. A lot of fighters' careers changed at that time. Very much so. Pettis's career changed. Benson Henderson's career changed. Yeah, for the worse. Yeah, no shit. Which, by the way, he's fighting more. Um. You, you just look at all the fighters who are no longer the beasts they used to be when they were able to have fucking sponsors on their on their pants yeah. and a little bit of good shit in their veins. Right. Got into, uh, what's his name, the uh, the young dragon or, the, or, no, the young dinosaur or the old dragon or whatever he goes by uh, <laughs> out of um, yeah, uh, Vitor Bel- Belfort. But, uh, I thought you were going to say Belchfort. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, the same thing. I mean... Everybody's career turned around 180 degrees, or at least a lot of people, right then when they uh, introduced that. I don't know if I was going to blame Reebok, but eh, yeah, might as well. Well, I, it's really the stringent fucking right. testing now. So the big question uh, this week being asked by the UFC and also Daniel Cormier is who should Cormier fight next? And I like that coming off the Twitter account from Cormier. Not who should I fight next, but who should Cormier fight next? That came from his? Yeah. Which, obviously, is somebody managing he's, yeah, his he's Twitter got a handler. Account. So, um, obviously, sense. there are only two choices here. And it's got to be uh, either Gustafson or it's got to be that Volk, uh, what, Volkov. Alexander is Volkov. Yeah. Uh, Believe the hype. Yeah. Yeah, that guy's been destroying fools. Yeah. I don't know that I'd want to be Gustafson. Samuel, Samuel, who was on the podcast uh, before, was making fun of me for the Volkov pick. Yeah. And that's why I told him to believe the hype. Yeah. And then he lays out Manawa in epic fashion. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's the whole thing. And I, I think what we're obviously going to see, the UFC is going to make Gustafson and Volkov fight. And then the winner of that will get DC. We'll fight DC next year. Yeah. Do you, think, um, do you think we see Cormier step in the octagon before the, or even have a fight announced before the end of the year? Well, I think what you do is I think you make, you, you make the fight for Gustafson and uh, Volkov and let's see where are we at, late September. I think you make that fight early December, mid-December, maybe yeah. one of the last fights of the year, and you have that one. So then that way they will announce it at that point, you know, probably five months, probably in May. Yeah. You know, because that way even if whoever it is who wins gets all fucked up, they'll be recovered and, you know, medically cleared by then, which will actually probably be June. You know what? I bet they do. I bet you'll have a, a DC fight during International Fight Week. Uh, well, I'm not going to go to Vegas for that. <laughs> Learned your lesson, did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, that still worked out pretty well because I got to see one of the best UFC fighter debuts I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I think I'm done with the light heavyweight division. Yeah. Uh, After get, to say getting it. burned by John and Rumble mm-hmm. in the in the same fucking 365 days, I, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. That, that division can do whatever the fuck it wants. Yeah, although, I mean, if Volkov comes out and just shuts down... He could be the harbinger of change. Yeah, I think so. And we usually see that. We see yeah. that a lot of somebody will come up and utterly just change the division. It's John always- Jones did it when he beat uh, Shogun. Yep, and no one, no one saw that coming. Yeah, same with Volkov. Nobody's really looking. <sighs> and this guy destroys fools, so... Um, other than that, I think I think I'm good on MMA. I mean, the big stuff that's going on is tonight, unless you count yeah. Bellator. But I don't call, call there, that there, big there's stuff. There's some yet. Uh, there's some pretty good pretty good rumors out there in the rumor mill. Okay, uh, if GSP beats Bisbing, apparently he's uh, rumor has it he's going to call out Connor. 
Oh, uh, like a super fight. So he's fighting Bisping at middleweight. Well, he, we know he can make welterweight. He can make 170. Yeah. And Connor can basically make 170 eating fucking French but fried cheeseburgers. But it's still, the problem, it, the problem is that's not Connor's natural weight. That is GSP's natural weight. I don't know. He seems come. He, I think he'd rather be fighting 185. I think for him to cut to 170, because he hasn't had to do it in over three years. Yeah. It'd be a tough cut. I, I just, I don't like a guy coming down and then somebody else going, hey, well, I don't have to worry about making weight so hard this time. The, that guy is always the one that loses. Yeah. I mean, look at Nate Diaz. That guy, is, he, he's huge, and he should be at the welterweight division, even though they still list him at, you know, lightweight. But um, Connor looked small against him, and Connor didn't look small against anybody, his own weight class. Sure. No, absolutely. 155 is right where he needs to be. Yeah, yeah, and that's the whole thing. That's why I don't. However, it, I would still pay money to see GSP and Connor fight. Yeah, because I think Connor would finally probably well would, I, I think he'd probably kick his ass. Oh um, yeah, it it'd be left hand town. Yeah, it, and that's how little respect I have for Bisping because I think GSP <laughs> will probably beat. Oh Bisping. yeah, I think GSP is going to come out. He's either going to gas and Bisping will deal with him, or he's going to come out and put on a twenty five minute clinic like he always does. Yeah. Well, Although it's been a long time. It has so been a long fucking time. Time is not your friend. So. Uh, Matt Brown fighting Diego Sanchez. When's that? Uh, November 11th in Norfolk. But uh, that's going to be Matt Brown's last fight. I think that's Nor- right. Norfolk right. off. Nor- really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, proper timing. Matt Brown's been getting his ass beat lately. Yeah. Cerrone. No, no. He, yeah. He, Matt Brown, he... He probably needed to uh, – God, who the hell was that that laid on like four or five liver kicks in one fight on here about two and a half years ago? Oh, God damn. I can't remember. I don't even remember it. But it was like yeah. at that point I thought, I think I'd be going And then he fought Cerrone, <laughs> and Cerrone knocked him out. Yeah. And you don't you don't knock Mac Brown out. No, that's why his nickname's the Immortal. I, I really would like to see him go out with a victory over Diego fucking Sanchez. The only Long thing that would make it better is if he was doing it in Albuquerque and he finished him. UFC is not going to get near that no, dirty not. little town again. So. Which is a goddamn shame. Yeah, it really is. But, but, I mean, but if you don't know how to put on a fight, you put on a tingly and you have a bunch of home judges. Yeah. I, yeah, no, no. Yep. You, uh, you kind of deserve to lose your shit. So. The last thing. Uh, apparently, uh, Tarverdian wants... To murder Ronda Rousey. <laughs> this is the worst news I have heard all week. I forgot about this. <laughs> and Holly, uh, or not Holly Holmes. Misha um, Tate. Misha Tate is the one that had delivered the goods on talking about this. And, and that is. Well, I heard Tarverdian on the uh, MMA hour with uh, Helwani. Yeah. Well, that's, that's where it broke. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to listen to Misha Tate's stuff. Well, but, um, yeah, that makes sense. Eh. But, um, <laughs> but nonetheless, yeah. The, uh, so apparently, Edmund Tarverdian. Is now sage is, to the MMA community is now saying he thinks that Ronda Rousey would be able to uh, get a victory over uh, Chris Cyborg Santos rather easily. Yeah. Now here's the problem: that ship sailed two fights ago for Ronda yeah. Rousey. The, d- the day Holly now. Holm connected with that head kick was the day the Cyborg fight went goodbye. Essentially, you could make that argument. You could also say, well, if even if there was a glimmer of hope that that fight might happen. Well, then with uh, the champ, uh, the current champ, uh, knocking her out, that, that, that's it. I, I mean, I, Ronda Rousey's done in, in the UFC. She's through. I mean, she's got a pretty good check from the WWE. Yeah, that's, look forward to seeing her in some uh, good old-fashioned pro wrestling. Yeah, that, the check is better. She can go out and have that moron she's married to's kids. She ain't going to uh, get fucked up unless no. someone drops her on her head on accident. Yeah. Which, you know. Never know. Happens. Don't 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 come in on like a uh, don't come come in on like a uh, uh, what what the hell was that? Don't don't pull a Bret Hart. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I think and it's great. Misha Tate is like it's weird that she'd be the. I mean, there's probably no voice of reason to be having this fight because it's not going to happen. But for Misha Tate, come and be like, look, I'm glad Cyborg's kind of lapping this thing off because she would fucking murder Ronda Rousey. That's it. And that's the last thing we need to see. Right. No, and Misha's right. Misha said that's uh, Nunez took care of it. Yeah. She, I mean, she basically did what Rouse, what Cyborg would do. Only Rousey was able to like still wake up the next day and probably just have a little bit of a headache. Yeah, I think Cyborg I think, would I think put Cyborg her in the would, fucking hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she'd be uh, talking out of the side of her mouth for the rest of her life. <laughs> and she'd sound like the guy off a of sling blade. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh shit! All right, let's wrap this thing up this week. Um, oh yeah, by the way, yeah. two and zero oh, fantasy football. Oh, good man. Uh, but it, I'm probably gonna lose this week because uh, the team I'm fucking fighting has Todd Gurley at running back, that, running back for the good, Rams, who uh, last night man? fighting the 49ers. I say fighting, <laughs> fight, fighting them. <laughs> fucking dude uh, ran in for two touchdowns and caught one. Had like a 32 point day. So the undefeated streak might be ending for uh, the men of the cloth, and she likes cloth. Yeah. All That's right, all right. Man. All right, man. Well, best of luck to you on that. And I like maybe uh, I like to have the support yeah. in these tough times. I don't know. Well, you know, I mean, I'm not a I'm not an NFL guy, so I mean, it sounds all well and good, I suppose. But hey, when you got shit on the line, especially your dignity. On to the picks for uh, drinks this week. I'm going to go with uh, green chili stew broth. After a while, I'm going to go with. Uh, <laughs> A uh, drinking flight of a uh, shot of rye, a tall boy of beer, and some runestone. Okay. Only because that's what you have lined up right now. Well, it's because I've just had it. <laughs> yeah. Metal. Do pick up Mastodon's EP, Cold Dark Place. Absolutely. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots put out a demo track of a song called Only Dying that was supposed to be on course. Supposed to be on uh, the Crow soundtrack. Listen to it today. Fucking amazing. Listen to it. Is good. Get to it. And uh, MMA, any picks there? I've got really nothing going on outside of... Um, I'm not going to pick that lady, KGB Lee, man. Yeah. Yeah, she's fighting for the... Uh, well, she's the only... She's champ. She's the only uh, flyweight they've ever known at LFA. So. Yeah, 125-er. She's like the uh, the female... Uh, You'll be Cerrone. seeing her in the UFC very and, soon. And she didn't want to do Ultimate Fighter because she didn't want to do the reality show nonsense. I don't I blame agree. her. Hey, me neither. She's know. already established as a dominant fighter. Why do yeah. you need to go on there and do that shit? Yeah. Nope. Don't need it. All right. Well... Enjoy uh, your weekend. We'll be back. Prob- we may very well be doing a Thursday next week. I don't know yet, but we'll, we'll see what's going on with that uh, because I might have to get the hell out of town one last time here before the uh, cooler weather starts to settle in and get some camping in. But anyway, uh, if so, yeah, we'll do it Thursday. Otherwise, look for us on Friday again next week, and uh, we'll get right back to it again and do all kinds of weird hedonistic nonsense and debauchery. I do believe it's time to get brown out. <laughs> Well, since you did miss out on a Thursday, that sounds good. I know. I got to make up for two days of drinking. God, it's going to be a tough night. But I'm going to get it done. All right. Mastodon getting you out. Hey, have a good week, you fools. See you next week. Horse.